Hi everyone, um, we still have eight more minutes, but um, if you don't mind, I would like to start because um, I would like to get more feedback if you guys don't mind, or should I wait? Do you mind if I start? <laughs> All right, um, I, will, I will go ahead then. Uh, I am Nodir, I come from uh, Kyrgyzstan, the Kyrgyz Republic, not Kurdistan, uh, which is not a country yet. Um, I'm primarily active on the Uzbek Wikipedia, uh, where I'm a bureaucrat and an administrator. Uh, today I would like to share our experience with working uh, um, uh, with a media outlet uh, uh, on how we promoted our Wikipedia and other uh, wiki projects in, in Uzbek. Um, the goal of my presentation is twofold. I would like to, first I would like to share with you our experience, positive experience, so that you can initiate similar projects to promote your uh, wikis. And uh, second, I would like to get some feedback on how we can further uh, promote our Wikipedia, because as I will to uh, tell you shortly, uh, we are facing a lot of challenges right now. Um, first off, I would like to tell a little bit about uh, Uzbek. Uh, it, it is a Turkic language spoken, spoken by around uh, 30 million people. Uh, most of them live in Uzbekistan. Uh, there are a lot, uh, millions of them living in other countries like me. I live in Kyrgyzstan, but I, my native language is Uzbek. So even though we have about close to 30 million Uzbek speakers, our Wikipedia is very underdeveloped. Um, it was founded in 2003. Um, as you can see here, we have, uh, we have uh, about over 100,000 articles, but believe it or not, only 6.4% of them were created by users. Um, the other 93.6% are bot created articles, so we have basically inflated the thing. Um, and there are only seven administrators, and um, I'm one of them. Um, as you can see here, starting from 2012, we used a bot to increase the number of articles. Actually, our goal was not to only to increase the number of articles. We actually wanted to improve the, uh, the encyclopedia. We, with permission, uploaded the whole, uh, a whole encyclopedia in Uzbek to the, to the site. Um, that was done basically. Our uh, idea was that the more articles we have, uh, the more people will use it. That was our uh, idea. In the past uh, few years, we have been working on improving these articles. Um, so why is the Uzbek Wikipedia uh, underdeveloped? There are a lot of uh, reasons. First of all, um, accessing the internet in Uzbekistan in other countries with Uzbek uh, minorities is problematic, to say the least. Um, and. Very few people uh, know about uh, uh, the Uzbek Wikipedia. Many people don't know what an encyclopedia is, yet alone what a Wikipedia is. And even fewer people contribute to uh, our wiki. And another reason is that uh, the Uzbek version of Wikipedia is currently blocked in the territory of Uzbekistan. Well, sort of. Why do I say sort of? Because the blockage isn't very robust. Um, you can simply avoid it by uh, adding S to HTTP. Simply adding S to HTTP does the trick. That's why we um, convinced uh, Google to start indexing uh, pages of the uh, Uzbek Wikipedia with HTTPS by default. That has kind of solved our problem, uh, but not totally because, um, I hate to say this, but the government Uzbekistan is known for its um, bad human ri uh, rights record. Um, human Rights Watch actually describes uh, its human rights record as um, um, atrocious. Um, uh, that's why, since it's blocked, simply the fact that it has been blocked uh, kind of scares people. They think that since it's been blocked, uh, my government doesn't approve of it, so I should, I should avoid uh, dealing with it. Uh, I, I kind of understand it because um, they f uh, fear facing persecution. Uh, that's why um, many people basically avoid using it uh, at all. Um, we will talk about that uh, more uh, later on. And how does the blockage work? Uh, initially, the users were redirected to uh, Microsoft's MSN, <laughs> and, and, like not a very serious website, but nowadays, 
I mean, if you insist on using HTTP, uh, you get this message, like internet connection lost. Uh, but since it's being indexed with HTTPS by default, uh, people are free to uh, read it at least and edit it. Um, now let's, uh, so what can we do to promote our Wikipedia since it's so underdeveloped? Um, we can organize outreach events. Since I'm not physically in Uzbekistan, I can't do that. I've done what I could in my own home country. We have around close to a million Uzbeks, so I've been trying hard to spread the word about our Uzbek Wikipedia. Our first goal is to tell people that it exists. It's a thing that you can use. And our next uh, goal, uh, logically, will be to um, ask them to participate more actively. And then um, I came up with an idea. Maybe we could cooperate with media outlets to tell people you know, to, what Wikipedia is. I contacted mainstream media in Uzbekistan Never got any feedback, any response, uh, but uh, Radio Free Europe's Uzbek service, uh, they were uh, more than willing to cooperate, so we decided to write a series of articles about um, the Uzbek Wikipedia and other wiki projects, and we dubbed the project Ozod Wiki. Ozod in Uzbek means free, uh, a nice pun here, so Ozod Wiki. Uh, it basically, uh, what we did was we uh, uh, hyperlinked uh, selected concepts used in Ozodlik Radio's reports to corresponding articles in Wikipedia. We also wrote a series of articles about um, active Wikimedians. Uh, we also uh, wrote, you know, uh, reviews of existing articles and uh, tutorials on how people can contribute to it. Uh, the project was mutually beneficial uh, because uh, also, like Radio C, uh, didn't have to do background information for most, um, uh, most of many of the uh, uh, articles, and uh, we uh, uh, on the other, uh, uh, and, and we also benefited uh, because uh, it has it's it's a big uh, media outlet has thousands of subscribers. Then, but again, it's totally blocked in Uzbekistan. It's like totally taboo, and. Uh, that's why initially I had, uh, I mean, concerns, like since it's a project, uh, it's a website blocked in Uzbekistan, uh, so maybe if I write articles about Wikipedia, people will think Wikipedia has something to do with other like radio, so, which my government doesn't like, so, so I, I kind of was afraid of scaring people away. But uh, we discussed it and we decided, okay, we, we're gonna make sure, uh, and in, in every article we, clearly pointed out that it's a project led by volunteer Wikimedians has, uh, you know, there is, there is no official connection between Ozil Radio C and uh, Wik, uh, Wik, our Wikipedia. It's a free project. Anyone can edit it. We're only trying to tell more people it exists, uh, you know, that, that they can use it, they can contribute to it. Uh, and we, it had a positive impact. And I will show you some stats. Um, um, uh, here's an example of uh, one of our articles. The last article was published uh, in January of 2016. We decided to take a break. Um, we published 33 unique articles. Uh, and uh, some of them were really useful, like this one uh, had uh, a lot of information about Wikipedia Zero. And I think this article was very well uh, re uh, received uh, because a lot of people didn't know that Wikipedia Zero exists in our country and they were very um, in Kyrgyzstan, I, I mean, and uh, I think they don't have it yet in Uzbekistan, but still a lot of people benefited from it. So it, overall, it was a very use, it's been a very useful project. And we also did podcasts; um, they, they could download, uh, listen, and uh, Radio for Europe's English version ran a story about our project. I included this into my uh, in my presentation because there are still misconceptions in the media about how we work. Um, the author of the article wrote that the Uzbek Wikipedia was founded by Nodir, who is run by Nodir, who founded the site himself and has contributed over a thousand entries. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't run it. I, I'm simply an administrator there, and I didn't found it. <laughs> Our founder is here. <laughs> Very glad to see you. And um, I haven't created a thousand articles. <laughs> I contacted them to have it fixed like numerous times. They fixed some of it, but they left the thousand entries thing. So I should, 
I, I don't know, I should create a thousand articles very soon so that the article's correct. <laughs> Long way to go still. <laughs> and um, so here are some stats. Uh, uh, here you can see that uh, we started the project in February of 2014, in February. Uh, as you can see, February, March, April, May, we published uh, a lot of articles. And in 2015, fewer articles, but the same period, kind of spring, early summer. We took a break in the summer uh, in, and started again publishing in October of 2014. And uh, in November, December, a few more articles, 2015. And our last article was published this year. It doesn't show here. So like early 2014, remember this? Uh, because uh, here we can see main page views. Um, so this is when the project uh, was started, so February, um, and uh, yeah, you can see the arrow. Okay, uh, February, March, April. So it was pretty impressive. But uh, to tell you the truth, I have no idea how this happened because <laughs> we uh, we took a break, and I still haven't been able to explain why uh, the page views skyrocketed in. June and July, I think. Um, uh, July, July, August, yeah. Um, and, on, and overall, if you take a look, uh, compared to 2013, uh, in 2014, we had a lot more views, page views. In 2015 as well. 2016, you know, we st going up still. And um, here you can see uh, the number of Wikipedians total. It didn't really affect the number of uh, Wikipedians because we basically focused on more people, please use it, read it, you know, and hopefully the next step will be uh, to have more uh, new uh, editors. And this graph is also a bit ambiguous because uh, the number of new Wikipedians uh, doesn't, uh, hasn't changed much since we started the project. But the number of edits did increase. This is due to bots, 2012, so we can ignore it here. And, uh, but here, as you can see, the uh, number of edits uh, go, went up um, when we started our project. And uh, it has kind of gone and down, but uh, so we, we see a lot of positive change here. Of course, all of the changes that took place, uh, we can't attribute them to our project only, uh, because it just so happens that they took at the same time as we were running our project. Um, so I have given you a, a, a general uh, idea about our project. Now I would like to, uh, I'm really looking forward to receiving some feedback um, on our project, how, what we can do more. Um, as I have told you, this, uh, we, were, we, we were not sure if we should start this project at all because we were already for Europe. As, as I've, I've told you, um, the government of Uzbekistan um, you know, we don't really know why the, Wikipedia, uh, the Uzbek Wikipedia was blocked. Uh, it was blocked at around uh, uh, September, uh, like late September, October 2011. And my personal idea, the, because the Uzbek Wikipedia is blocked, and we don't have much material that the government would like to see. I mean, we don't revert edits that are critical of uh, the government. Uh, but it's just nobody has dared to do that yet. Um, but on the Russian Wikipedia, on the English Wikipedia, there are a lot of articles um, that openly, I mean, for, in, in a neutral way, uh, criticize the country's human rights record. But why block only the Uzbek Wikipedia? Well, uh, as you can see, uh, in October of 2011, uh, somebody from an IP address created an article about the the Uzbek president's wife with very insulting words. I think that some, has something to do uh, with the blockage. Maybe they thought if somebody can do it. Back then, there were not many active users, so this vandalism stayed there like for a few days, I think. Um, uh, yeah, that's why they thought, so, so we can't control it. It's just safer to block it. I guess that's their line of thinking. And others have pro uh, proposed, maybe they have blocked it simply as an act of showmanship. Uh, and I think an American anthropologist wrote that. Uh, <laughs> because in, 
concept, uh, this uh, idea of Wikipedia is at odds with the government's regime. Uh, they think every, anything that's in Uzbek is subject to their jurisdiction. I guess that's the case. Um, that's, I guess that, that, that's what they think, but um, I mean, it's a free encyclopedia. That's why we, uh, or I, or, what I'm trying to say is that we decided to run the project anyway, because I mean, eventually things are gonna change, but we can't, uh, so I would like to hear your thoughts on that as well. We haven't ha faced this problem, but sometimes people come and write about human rights activists, Uzbek human rights activists who have faced persecution. Some of our users in, inside Uzbekistan would like them to, would like us to delete them or revert those edits. And there are a lot of Uzbeks who are outside the country and I mean, we have faced this only twice only, but still, um, my, uh, per, I personally, I think it's a free encyclopedia. As long as it's sourced, I think we should keep it. But on the other hand, what if the government decides to have a stronger uh, ban on, on, on our Wikipedia? That's why it's a very complex issue right now. And uh, coming from Kyrgyzstan, uh, I, can't, I don't think I can speak on behalf of Uzbeks in Uzbekistan. Uh, I, I want to make, make that clear. But I would really would love to hear your thoughts on this, you know, how we should, we should proceed. Uh, shall we continue our project, resume it? Um, and I would also like to hear how we can, what we can do more to uh, spread the word about our Wikipedia. Because like there are 30 million Uzbeks and we have 8,000 human created articles, which is really bad indicator, I would say. And questions, comments, please. I think we still have uh, time, yes. Uh, 20 minutes, yes, yeah. Hi, Jimmy Wales. Uh, yeah. So, uh, first of all... I happen I to know to... you. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> just making sure other people uh, know who I am. So, uh, first of all, I just want to thank you so much uh, for this work. I think it's incredibly important. Um, I always think that uh, Wikipedians who are working in difficult environments um, are really um, our heroes, and so we want to thank you for that. Uh, I also want to offer my personal support um, if there's anything that we could do. So what I would like to do um, is at some point have a, a Skype conversation with you. Um, maybe huh? we can meet here, but we're running out of time. Uh -huh. um, to discuss uh, things that I may be able to do or that are wise or unwise uh, for me to do. So for example, there are people I know who know uh, the president of Uzbekistan, uh, to have an introduction, to have a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. Of course, as we all know, uh, this kind of thing can be uh, possibly very helpful if I can persuade them to give some signal that he is okay. Yeah. Um, also, if they say, oh, well, we didn't realize HTTPS isn't blocked, We'll block all of Wikipedia, including yeah. English and Russian. Okay, this is not helpful. So sometimes it's better to be a little quietly uh, diplomatic, but we should have a conversation um, about that. The other ideas that I would have would be to think about uh, universities uh, within uh, Uzbekistan mm -hmm. uh, to see if we could think about reaching out to them for uh, partnerships uh, to get their influence and their support. Maybe this is not possible, but it's the kind of thing that I think we could be thinking about. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I, I may be able to help. Uh, people, they may not answer uh, random volunteers from Kyrgyzstan, uh, but they'll, <laughs> they'll definitely answer my phone call. So yeah, that would if, be we, great. if we want to do something like that, I'm here as a resource for you um, and happy to be directed by your community as to anything that I can do to help. Uh, in the meantime, um, Carry on. I think it's fantastic. Oh, and also, I think it's very important that, uh, that you not uh, quietly self-censor Wikipedia yeah. in the hopes of changing the government's mind because this uh, undermines the entire principle. So I agree Ex with you on exactly. that. Exactly. And th I think the correct answer to that is to make sure that those entries are neutral and mm -hmm. calm. Uh, mm -hmm. They're not accidentally pieces of ranting advocacy, mm -hmm. uh, but also to make sure, well, as much as you can, that produce more content so that they can see, oh, this isn't just a site with four entries about the president's wife. This is actually an active community, and it's really about education. It's really about sharing knowledge, something yeah. they can't really object to. 
Yeah. Th thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will discuss it further. I'm very glad you are willing to support us. Chris? Hi, dear. How are you? Good. <laughs> Thanks for your excellent presentation. I wanted to ask if you knew of resources for people to actually learn uh, the uh, Uzbek language, for people who wanted to start contributing, even in just small ways, to the project. Are you were aware of any resources that might be available online so that people might be able to get started to contribute to your project? Even um, in just small ways, I think might be helpful to start where people who are maybe are just learning the language could be contributing in, in ways that maybe don't require you know, fluency in the language, and that would allow more you know, fluent speakers of the language to focus on um, article building and, and more you know, complex tasks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so you, you would like to know uh, what online resources there are where you can get a basic uh, knowledge of yeah, Uzbek, yeah? Um, Actually, there are not many. Well, for a start, we are on Google Translate. <laughs> it does a pretty bad job of translating right now. Actually, we ran an Ozod Wiki article. Um, uh, I'm going to actually show it to you because it's very funny. <laughs> um, so you could start from there. And then this website seems to be down. One of our Wiki users actually started it on Ateleus. Uh, for some reason, it's down. Um, and uh, I really don't know. Um, there are not like specific websites dedicated to Uzbek, but there are a lot of dictionaries and there are a lot of books uh, in this website called Zio Uz. I think there is a book uh, by an English author, uh, An Introduction to Uzbek. Zeouz.com, I think. So I'll, I'll, I'll share the link with you. Uh, I think we're friends on Facebook, right? <laughs> and like, coming back to Google Translate, um, uh, Uzbek has been added to Google Translate. This is our wiki, uh, Ozod Wiki article. And this is the English version. I am from Uzbekistan. And the translation is like the exact opposite. I'm not from Uzbekistan. <laughs> so so that, that, I think it has gotten better over time. Um, so yeah, I will share the links with you. This is, uh, this EOZ is like a kind of wiki um, in the sense that uh, uh, they upload books copyrighted with all the disclaimers, and, but you can download them for your personal use and there are a lot of books as well. So I hope that answers your question. And any more? Thank you. More questions, comments? I would love to hear your thoughts since we still have uh, at time. Well, hello, Manuel from Austria. Thank uh -huh. you, Rahmat, for your presentation. My question is about the fact that in the Republic of Uzbekistan, you actually have a second language commu community, the Karakal Park Wikipedia. And my question is uh, whether the Republic of Uzbekistan is also trying to force control on this Wikipedia or only specifically on the Uzbek. You know about this? Uh, can you repeat the question? I, I heard the first part, the second part, yeah. Couldn't well, um, it's about the Karakal Park Wikipedia. Uh -huh. um, does the government of the Republic of Uzbekistan also try to control content and access to Karakal Park Wiki or only to Uzbek Wiki? Ah, oh, okay, I got it. No, no. Um, the Karakal Park Wikipedia is really small, I think. Um, it hasn't been uh, blocked yet. I mean, <laughs> hopefully it will never be, but. <laughs> And like I said, I mean, the blockage, uh, I get the impression that they, they blocked it and then they forgot about it, you know, like in 2011, since they haven't done anything like uh, um, further, they haven't taken any further steps um, to remove it or to make it stronger so that, <laughs> I mean, simply adding S does the trick, I mean, <laughs> so, um, but the Karakalpak Wiki uh, hasn't been affected. Um, yeah, M more, more questions? Comments? All right. Um, we started the presentation a bit early, and I think we can start, finish it a bit uh, early as well. And thank you very much for coming, and good luck to all of you. <laughs>